Greetings children, adults, students and masters, seekers and explorers, humans and non-humans. I invite all of you to accompany me in a world of information and experiences, heavens and earths, natures and functionalities, of all models and no models, all structures and no structures. Some call it the universal matrix, others call it the mind of creation or the Akashic records. We will call it the Oath Library. All things are found within it and all things can be experienced, comprehended and understood. Within it all things are connected and part of one another. All things are intertwined, all truths, all fictions and all maths, all states and all forms, all natures and all sources, all life and all journeys. Each of us goes within it where one is permitted, and so this is us sharing some of the droplets which we were fortunate enough to witness. One time, in my exploration, I came across this immense section filled with all natures of beasts. Humans are also found there in more than one source. The variety and the complexity could easily be overwhelming. I could feel that human consciousness had been there before and expressed its information through things such as arts, sciences and religions. One of the miraculous characteristics of the Oath Library is that it always reveals its intelligence and information through means and in levels which he who opens towards it can understand and comprehend. I explored for quite some time in this section and one of my favorites were the expressions which people generally refer to as magical or mythological flying creatures. Together we will explore a little four of the most recognizable flying creatures, the phoenix, the dragon, the griffin and the fairies. In this first video we will spend some time with the fundamental things one is in need of when recognizing and interacting with the phoenix. And so, let us be acquainted with the phoenix. E the phoenix, the eternal flame. E who came first from the cosmic egg of creation. E through whom all things were born and reborn. E who inspires the breath of life in all creation. E who is there at all beginnings and beats the eye wings to inspire all motion in existence. E who ignited all realities and universes. E who is present in every breath, every thought and every presence. E who is found in all things for all things are born from its breath. E from whose eggs hatched all primordials into creation. No manifested force can comprehend E, for all things in creation are found in the design of Yai feathers. All are found in Yai embrace and all cycles in existence are Yai never ending. Now that we have been introduced to the divine nature of the phoenix, we firstly address its core representative aspects and characteristics. As an embodiment we know that it is an entity of great and ancient cosmic power. Its power is of dynamic nature, for it itself represents the law of rhythm. From a linear point of view, within the unfoldment of reality all things are found as a beautiful rhythmical composition. All things, all happenings are of rhythmic nature. All happenings are either heading in the direction of being born, either in the direction of dying, either in the direction of appearing or in the direction of disappearing, contracting or dissolving, advancing or retreating, revealing or concealing, so on and so forth. The nature and power of the phoenix is of being that within which the rhythmical process is generated. No unfoldment of time, nor of transformation, motion or change happens prior or outside the existence of the phoenix. If we are to address it in terms of the four pillars of existence, the pillar of content and form, the pillar of dynamics and flows, the pillar of intelligence and structures, the pillar of presence and spirit, the phoenix represents the pillar of dynamics and flows. No dynamics, no flows, 
No unfoldment of events and happenings would exist if that which is known as the phoenix wouldn't. From high to low, from big to small, from wide to narrow, all things are subjected to the nature of the phoenix. All conversations in existence happen through the nature and power of the phoenix. When one goes through a process of shifting his inner center, that is when he goes through a process of rebirth through the power of the phoenix. The endings are many times long and arduous, and the beginnings can be purging and violent. When one interacts with the phoenix, one needs to be patient. Not force anything, for things that happen in shifting stages will be very impactful throughout the next cycle. Something small in the beginning, or something small which is unsettled at the end of a cycle has considerable impact on the next. The phoenix should not be rushed, and the phoenix should be waited for. For her motion is the one which always gives the appropriate rhythm and pace. One embraces the phoenix and thus one will always be gracefully accompanied by it. One does not trap nor train the phoenix, for he who does so just traps himself for all happenings and all individuals are part of her play. Keep yourself composed and go only as close to her as appropriate, for her light, her flame and her presence are infinitely divine. Its music is deep, its voice is high. Her strength is universal, her softness pure, punishing or full of blessings, depending on how she is greeted. Enjoy the light and warmth of the phoenix, and its divine nature will flow gracefully through you. We thank you all for visiting the Oath Library, and see you next time. If you enjoyed watching our video about the phoenix, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We thank you for staying with us until the end and stay tuned for the next video in which we will address the universal nature of the dragon.